Woohoo! There it is, inch and a quarter. What happened, Tom? It is always, always something. Just when you think you're getting a great start, everybody's in a good mood, perfect weather, we get over here and connect to the uh, the county drill, and my brother was kind enough to let me use that big 6420 that he uses on highway roadside mowing because it's a wide stance tractor to be better for these slopes. And um, my brother hard wire or hard plums all of his hydraulic lines into a big valve body for operating those uh, bat wing tractors. We didn't even think about it till we got here to connect the tilt and lift cylinders on the drill that there's no uh, quick connect. So I had to go buy the local John Deere dealership and buy two of these at $112.50 a piece. And the stinking part about it is my brother's got a box of these used over in his farm that I could have went over and got four hours away. But we had to do this to keep moving. back over starting this new project for a friend of mine uh, not too far from my farm it's convenient down the road and this thing just a little history this is an old cattle pasture really some steep slopes up here um, it was all Kentucky 31 tall fescue just zero wildlife value it's been in pasture for a couple decades uh, my friend bought this farm and has been using this in very little. So there, over some time, some black locusts and some other undesirable trees have sprouted up in that pasture. We cut all the trees off of it, pushed them off, and it's been sprayed, burned down with glyphosate. And, and we've tried to capture that fescue at a growth stage where it would re respond well to the herbicide, but not so be so tall that it was going to leave excessive material on top of the soil. Now, there's nothing we can do about it. There's a lot of material, uh, residue or duff on top of the soil, but the drill will cut right through that and put the seed into the, into the soil, uh, shallow planted. Wanted to leave that residue on there rather than burning it to provide moisture, um, basically a mulch, and, and to also prevent erosion of the soil because you're gonna see some of these slopes are pretty extreme up here. Got the wide stance tractor, and um, it's gonna be a little, little uh, I don't know, the people say there's some tense moments, you know, there's a, a, a pucker factor involved here going up and down some of these hills. But anyway, this is a really cool project because just over the hill, we put a little uh, oasis food plot down below the bluff. He's got a big giant section of hardwood timber, some ag fields up on top, a couple food plots. We're gonna do a, a, a fruit and mass tree orchard up on top in another clearing. So we're, we're adding some additional extension value to this farm to the east side, which has typically been a zero for him. Between the edge of the timber line and the county road down over the bottom of the hill, there's 10 plus acres here that he's not been able to utilize. The deer come out here in the summertime, but as soon as that frost kills these, these pasture grasses, it's zero. There's just nothing out here using it at all. So we're converting this to a, a warm season, tall prairie with the hilltops out here and the timber nearby and a pond just over the hill, I can just imagine that we're gonna extend the value and the utilization of bedding and security cover out here on these hills tenfold for him. It's really, a, it's a cool project because of the topography and the sites up here, but just, I've seen the deer utilization, the trails coming in and out of here and where we put that food plot in the bottom there, he'll have a great access to get in and out covertly and have a, a beautiful wind direction set up there to ambush some big bucks here in this in this plot as they're coming off this uh, warm season grass field. But anyway, this is about the fourth or fifth visit here through these different stages of preparing this. But today, warm season grasses are going in the ground.
a lot of times whenever you talk about planting native warm season grasses, I, I can't tell you how many times I've talked to guys that are getting ready to plant it and they go out there with a disc or they go out there with a tiller and they till it up and they get a really, what they think is a good seed bed for native grasses. And to be honest, you really don't need a seed bed. If you look behind me, this is just dead fescue, orchard grass, old grown up pasture. We've got a couple, you know, there's a nettle coming back. We've got some broadleafs coming in. We're probably gonna spray it one more time, but this is perfect. It's been sprayed. There's, I mean, this, this fescue is gonna ask, act as a mulch for this grass whenever it's coming up. And it's also gonna help, you know, stop any kind of erosion if we get a big rain. But this is a pass that we've already planted. And if you look through and you pull this grass back and you can see this ditch right here, there's a little line right here where the, the drill has gone through. And if I do any kind of looking, I guarantee you we'll find some seed. There's, there's an Indian grass right there and that's perfect. Now a lot of guys will say that's not planted, but you want 80% of your seed sitting right there. It's touching soil or touching organic matter and the first rain we get, that's gonna sink itself right in there. Um, we look over here, this is actually the drill mark right here where we went through. I guarantee if we do a little looking, there's one right there. That's seed and soil contact, perfect. And we keep digging, there's another one right there and it's not too deep. That is the number one key when you talk about planting a warm season grass. You do not want to plant it deep. You do not want to disturb the soil and, and create that flush of weeds that's just sitting there waiting to, to germinate. This is minimal disturbance. We're coming in here one time spraying, maybe twice, and one time pass with the drill. Done deal. This is absolutely perfect. All right, it's uh, sunset and we're wrapping this thing up finally. Uh, a couple little setbacks today with the equipment, but all in all, we got it done finally. Um, one of the things I wanted to talk about here at the end is this, this pasture has been in this state for who knows, 25, 50 years, and there's a lot of additional stuff in here besides the tall fescue. There's um, mare's tail, there's patches of blackberry, there are additional sapling trees that I've yet to, find, uh, yet to cut. So this is going to be an ongoing process to keep this thing cleaned down between chemical ap application. Uh, probably I'm gonna do a, a, a follow-up with panoramic SL as a, uh, an additional burn down and which will also act as a pre-emergent for additional seeds that will try to germinate. We're gonna be able to utilize 2,4-D after the grasses get to a certain stage of development to uh, control any broadleaf weeds out here as a follow-up. And I just, I just know this is, is not gonna be one of the easiest sites that I've ever planted just because of, hey, this thing's been an old rugged pasture for a lot, a lot of years, and it's not gonna give up easy in the conversion. So, um, but we're gonna win that fight, and this is gonna be a beautiful stand of warm season grasses here. And the wildlife is going to love us for it.